Okay, here we go. Take three, of course. I recorded this last night and I didn't like it, so I did it again. And then I'm not the only one at home today, so I got interrupted. That's okay. What are we doing? Staring at uh, staring at your bench? Yep. Okay. He's at least last time I had a radio to stare at for a while. Okay. Here's the deal. First part of this, I wanted to show you that I've installed some new lights, and look how wonderful and bright this is down here, and how wonderful and bright my workbench is. Now, the second thing I did is I redesigned my bench lights, and they are much brighter using less actual brightness. And my bench lights are can lights, and I make them out of coffee cans. I drink chock full of nuts because it comes with a free metal can. You can do cool things with it. I use regular old plugs here to, for, for the power. And inside is very simple, wired up. This thing used to be in the middle, shooting straight down. And it was giving a nice round thing, but I was using like four of them and it wasn't working properly because the ones be underneath the shelf over here were in the wrong spot, et cetera, et cetera. So if you notice, let's see if I'm doing this. If you notice up in there now that the thing is off to the side, so when I hang it like this, it shoots out diagonally, and it gives a much, much better saturation. Let's see if I can do this right this time. Look, look at those lights. Those are just two lights now, whereas before, the cutoff was kind of right here, and it started to get dark here, but it was more bright back there, which was no good, because it was coming straight down. Now it's hanging out here, coming out, and then if I need the extra light, I've got that third one there. That covers my physical illumination for my workbench, which is exactly what my goal was. Because we all need the proper light to see what we're doing, both literally and figuratively. This is one of those things where it can sound all woo, but I, it also means I'm literally talking about making lights so you can see why you're working. So what are we gonna work on? What are we gonna work at? Well, keeping the theme of light, I wanted to show you this. This is the elation. Joy 300, a beautiful specimen of a mirrored scanner light that is the culmination of the 20th century of technology made in 1999 by the American DJ company under the banner Elation. And this thing weighs about 55 pounds. It draws 350 watts of current for 300 watt metal highlight arc light that shoots a 13 degree beam wherever you send it with that mirror. Thing weighs 55 pounds, draws a lot of power, it's not very portable. I have two of them, they're great. I bought them when I started my adventure in lighting a bunch of years ago and they, I bought them used from a guy, I think I paid like $500 for the pair, maybe even $600. Uh, and they got, I got a year or two out of them and one of them crapped out and I got to the point where I, I did a bunch of troubleshooting and it was to the point where I was gonna have to replace an igniter or a, a capacitor or something and I didn't, didn't go that far. They've sat on my shelf now for five years and now it's time to take care of them and do something with them. And so while I tear this out, I thought I might tell you a little bit about why we're getting rid of these and not recycling them as is or trying to fix them and what what about lighting and lighting technology and whatever. So here we are, this is 1999 and this would this would have cost a couple of thousand dollars and it would have been something that would have been I unscrewed that earlier. Would have been in a club hanging from a ceiling or might have been taken on the road at, as part of an arena show or something. I don't know exactly. They were bright, uh, but they were power hungry and they were not very portable. In contrast, just to give you an idea, the scanners that I use now are at the kind of the bottom of the line of acceptable stuff. They're Chevets and they're the bottom of the Chevet line, but they're very acceptable. They're, they use less than 100 watts of power on a 60 watt LED, they're brighter than this with a bit wider beam angle, more toys inside of things that rotate and, and move and, and better, all around just better light. They weigh 11 pounds, draw no power of course, you can hang them in the air, don't worry about them, and it's just, 
there's no comparison. Nobody wants to deal with these anymore because of that. We've, we've gone so far that the technology is just flipped over. Now, I say that, now that's interesting because this is the technology that I grew up watching and thinking about in the 90s. I'm going, oh, that's cool, that's cool, that's cool. And by the time I really got interested in lighting, in like 2010, the LED revolution was on us. And this stuff was already being phased out. Now, back when this stuff was going on, the cheap stuff was really cheap. I mean, if you got like, some of those lights were just not very bright at all and they didn't do anything and they were really chintzy. And if you wanted to do anything real, you had to spend some big bucks. So it was very cost prohibitive. The LEDs brought that right, cost right down. Um, and then the other thing you did for a little bit was put a glut of the older stuff out into the market, which helped people move along. But the other thing is, is that the, the quality of the crappy stuff has just exploded to, to goodness. Um, the floor has come up in quality. So your garbage stuff at this point is much, much better. All right. So I pulled those screws out. I know what's happened. I pulled this plate out. This slides like this. And then I have to disconnect this serial cable. Like I said, I have a pair of these and I've already disconnected this once. Completely tore out the first, well, completely preliminarily stripped the first one because I did a take on this last night doing it. But that's okay because I didn't like it in part because there was a lot of, oh, I don't know what that thing is. I'm gonna have to look that up. And so I went and looked it up and now I can talk about what's in here a little bit more because now I know what's in there. So anyway, to give you an idea of what was going on, oh, by the way, first of all, two big heavy duty fans, bunch of stepper motors in here. Um, yeah, this is great it's for, for scrap, for salvaging stuff. Let's see. Oh, and let me pull this off. So. I worked with a guy one time, he was telling me, oh yeah, I used to work in the 80s is, uh, on, the, on the big rock tours, you know, Def Leppard and Motley Crue and all that. And he goes, and that was his par cans, as far as the eye can see, we had 120K rigs, and I was the par can guy. So a 120K rig means there was uh, 120,000 watts of power. Um, that was 120,000 watt par cans. His job was to among other things, but his job each day before those 120 par cans got lifted into the air above the band at the arenas was to test them and make sure they all worked and change out the lamps, all the bulbs. Think about it like your backyard hot floodlights. Did that. He said he changed out 30 or 40 of those lamps every day to put up the... Then you had to have your own generator and the thing... I mean, 120K, 120,000 watts is a lot of power. Um, that'll run your neighborhood for a while. Oh, look at what we got in here. Isn't this neat? This is cool, isn't it? Let me back this up so it's under the light. That's what, see? See what I got the light there for? All right. Now, let's look at this physical up here. So here we are in this mid technology and this is great. And this is kind of, this is the same way as all other works. The power supply is different, the light source is a little bit different, but this is how my smaller scanners work. Uh, and they've also managed to manufacture this much smaller. So anyway, you have your light source here. All this, this is the circuit board. These are, uh, and, and behind it is the transformer with the uh, big giant capacitor and the igniter to strike the arc across this lamp. This lamp goes, this is a reflector, lens, lens, Here's the gobo wheel, and it goes through the gobo wheel. And of course, one of these stepper motors up here is um, what would run this gobo wheel. And so spin that around. Then this is the color wheel, and then the effects wheel. So there's a prism, and there's a frost, and there's all that stuff. And this is where the colors go. Um, and, and there's, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Seven? Am I counting that right? Big old heavy duty stepper motors. Oh, then there's also a manual shutter. Um, one thing about these these uh, LED or these not LEDs is you didn't want to lamp them on and off. LEDs you just turn them on and off and it doesn't matter. Um, so you just 
intensity down. These You lamp them on, they stay on, but you pull the intensity down. They had manual shutters to close the light off. And some of these, I'm not sure how this, this strobes. This might strobe with the shutter. This might be a strobe shutter. It goes... Um, so that's... That's part of the thing, like uh, with the LED, you can turn the power on, off, on, off, on, off, and it will strobe on its own. So you've got an automatic strobe, you don't have to worry about burning things out. LED is just much better all the way around. But this is a heavy, heavy duty. Now this is a serial port that comes up, if you notice, on the mirror there's two more stepper motors and, a, and, a, and, another, and another lens in the, in, the, in the metal casing. So that's all, this is all really, really good stuff. Now, when you get down here, I'm going to pull this board out and show you some things, but right now I want to show you the board. Now, last night in the video that I started, I was like, oh, let me, let me, oh, look at this. I wonder what this does. I wonder what this is. Ah. So I looked this up today to check it out to just to see what was going on. Um, this is, I actually pulled a data sheet on this. I don't know what I was looking at. Yeah, but I got a pin out and a thing. I think this is a, a primitive arm chip. I'm going to keep this board and I'm going to keep this because this might be something that I can flash and use. I'm not sophisticated enough to do that yet, but I'm aware that that stuff exists and maybe some nerd will be able to help me. It is uh, an at, I forgot what the name of this stupid thing was. At. Atel, it's it's a chip maker. Amtel, Amtel, Atmel, Atmel, Atmel eighty nine OS eight five one five eight PI nine nine three four. There's, you know, you might be able to recycle that. These are all the stepper motor control processor chips, and I think this LED readout and these buttons are are. You know, this little thing here is not, nothing, but we might be able to salvage these parts and use these LEDs over or whatever. But I'm, uh, I'm interested to see, I'm going to keep this because I, I think that these might be resalvageable. This is really interesting. It's like looking, this is not what, what now everything's all on one chip and there's a million, you know how it goes with, with modern stuff. But this is, this is older. So we're going to salvage this for parts no matter what. Um, let's see if we can get this off of here. I'll talk a little bit more. Now, so there's that, and we're going back to the 80s and the power can guys, and you had to be an electrician to set yourself up, set your, your set your arena stuff up, and that was also prohibitive. And then if you go back into the 70s and the 60s, when this really started, and that's where I'm kind of going with this, because my buddy Mick Brockett is from that era, and you all know Mick because he's the lighting director of Nectar, your favorite band, who's going on their 50th anniversary tour. Well, I... Ding that up good already, huh? That doesn't need to pull out. Going on their 50th anniversary tour, and I'm helping Mick update his stuff because we did that show in October, and he brought out all his old liquids and slideshows and stuff, and it just couldn't keep up with the modern stuff. So what he's trying to do is digitize things and use all his use the old artwork and the old styles and use them in a manner that with modern projectors and modern computers and stuff so he can take it compact on the road and doesn't have to worry about inks and all this stuff because God, his setup was beautiful. Boy, was it manual and hot and steamy. Let me tell you, it was a beautiful board. Back of that, beautifully man manufactured. And I'm not sure where either. This is 1999, it might have been China, but might not have been. If you look here, okay, so you can't really see this, but since this is an arc light, this is an arc light here. Let me take this out and show you what this is all about. If you've never seen one of these, this is dirty and old, but let's see if I can get this to focus. There we go. See, there's no filament between the two of those things. And that's on purpose because between those two tips, there's so much electricity that flows that it strikes an arc and it glows real bright. And so that's not broken. It's, this is a 700 hour light, I think, and it's got about 200 hours, 200 and 300 hours on it. So that, that, that darkness is happening and it, it would, that would eventually go. But 
And those were not cheap lights. I don't remember how much they were. I only had to replace them once, but they were not cheap. Anyway, this is the ballast. And then, and I'm not sure which is which. Actually, I, this is either the giant capacitor or this is, no, that's the giant capacitor and this is the igniter. And I'm not gonna pretend that I really understand exactly what what happens with this and, and there's more smart people on YouTube that will explain this to you. But basically what happens is this is a giant transformer and it builds up energy in the capacitor to smooth it out and, and, and it's gotta push a lot of energy to make strike that arc. And because of the nature of it, this igniter is another, I think it's basically another giant capacitor or some kind of shot thing. It suits a, a it's the same as, it's the same principle as your fluorescent lights. It's gotta shoot a, an injection of super high voltage, a, a pretty high current, to get everything moving. And then once it gets going, the capacitor helps keep the arc struck and then this giant transformer in here is um, its thing. Now, if you read this, it says, Rakhia Slovakia, Slovakia, uh, type TDB, blah, 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 244120. So this is made in Slovakia, at least this part. Uh, shout out to my cousins. That might be, um, who knows? Maybe my cousins built this light. That's pretty crazy, actually, if you stop and think about it. Um, I do have cousins there. Of course, I don't know them or whatever. And they don't, they're, like, far removed at this point. But let's see. Four generations removed? Three? Came, came, came about 120 years ago. 100, 120 years ago. So, yeah. Probably not very much resemblance to me anymore at that point. But they exist. So anyway, there's a couple of fuses in here. We're gonna, we've got DMX ports, big nice metal ones. There's some serial cables. There's this whole big um, run of cables that we're gonna pull out of here, pull out all this, all these step promoters. We're gonna keep all the lenses and all the reflectors and see what we can do with the gobos. And I don't think we're gonna keep any of this other giant capacitors or any of that stuff. We'll see. I see a giant resistor sitting on here that I might keep. We'll see what we get or in here. I don't know what's gonna happen. I don't wanna take too much or whatever. Um, that's completely useless, but I wanna strip this out and see if I can't uh, figure out some use for this stuff. It's really, really nice. This is a heavy duty metal case, frame. There's nice, these are nice cabling. I mean, all this is really heavy duty, high end stuff that will come in handy for me as we go forward. I don't know what for, but I don't know. I'm gonna be able to build a robot or, or something or a fan. Or <laughs> anyway, I'm really, really glad about this. And then I also cleared up some space on a shelf, which is pretty cool. I'm going to throw all this stuff in a box as I do it. And then as it comes up, I mean, you always need spare wire and harnesses and, and C13s and stupid shit like that. So I'm um, just going to do it. And uh, I guess the last thing I wanted to, to finish up with was, was uh, talking about this constant march forward, it's just things, things work easier and work better. But what I'm finding is I'm much more comfortable with the old aesthetic. And so I'm really excited to help Mick um, do what he's doing, which is, you know, like I said, updating his old stuff so he can use it in the modern context because it, it deserves to be watched and it deserves to be seen and, 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 and enjoyed or experienced or whatever you want to call it. But it can't in its original form because that technology is just so cumbersome that it's just impossible. And then what we're looking at right now is just, just 20 years old technology that is so cumbersome that it's not worth anything except to tear down for scrap parts for building robots and monsters and stuff. So I, everything's moving along so much faster, but but, but the thing is, is like, I, I don't know if I like the way that the new look looks. I don't like video the video walls, and I don't like the, some of these super white, super bright lights. Um, I think that some of the colors that are being produced in the new LEDs are just not the right colors. They're, they're the harsher, newer LED style, I don't know what you wanna call them, the new LED lights, uh, colors. So if we can kind of meld the two, and that's what we want to do here anyway, this is all a part of technology. It's like we, we need to keep moving forward, but sometimes we need to go back a little bit. And, and so we're going to 
revive and use the aesthetic of the old to, to get into the new. And I think that's, that's great. So um, I'm excited to see Mick out there doing that. And I'm excited to get this tore down. Um, I have a bunch of things to take apart here. And we're gonna keep rambling away on this channel and see if maybe we can't make something stick. I've got a couple of minutes left. I'd like to keep these around half an hour because of the 29.59. But, and so what I wanna say is, <laughs> I just wanted to give an update on the GE radio because that was my first project. And I'm having a little bit of trouble with the thing cutting out with power. And I think what's happening is that either the batteries are jiggling because there's no back case, or it's either the batteries are having an issue, or it's some, hi Mr. Spider. Where are you going? Do you see these guys? Where is he? There he is. See him? What is he doing? Where does he think he's going? No, 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 you cannot crawl into my light. He's confused. Come on. Oh, I love them, but they are creepy. I love them, but they are creepy. Kind of like me. No, I'm, I'm not. I'm not creepy. I'm a lot of things. I'm a jerk, but I'm not creepy. Um, <laughs> where was I? Oh, so the Super Raider is giving me a little bit of a problem. And I'm not sure it's with the power. And I think it might have to do with the batteries kicking up. But anyway, the, the Bluetooth knocks out and then I lose it. And then, but nothing else kicks back. It, like the radio is fine. So if I'm getting a power, I might be getting a power dip otherwise. But I'm not going to play with it until I get a chance to really work on the whole color wheel. Okay, so there's a... Jesus Crimper over here. So we're going to the point of no return if we start taking this stuff off. That's fine. I want to save this belt if I can. There we go. There we go. You see what's going on here? No, you can't. Of course not. I'm in the wrong spot. Oh, popping that off. I popped that off. Now there's one of those. Let's see if I can do this. go okay so let's see I have to remember that I'm not trying to put this back together so I don't have to worry too much but I want to keep it clean and nice so anyway next step of that stupid it's not stupid next step of the super radio project will be to put the battery power in and I want to get that going better um, Put a bid on an old GE receiver. The guy put it on Facebook Marketplace and said, "Oh, super rare." And I'm like, "I had uh, one of those. If it was in the, if it was in a TV show or a movie, it would have been like a, a like a premonition flash, where all of a sudden I just was transported to another place." How is that connected? Ah, this is such a, a maze of stuff, and everything's connected to each other. Um, Instantly transported back to my grandmother's house. I'm like, oh my god, that's my grandmother's radio. I gotta. I, of course, the guy sold it immediately, and I couldn't. And, and there's not another one to be found anywhere. There's a guy in like somewhere selling it for like 150 bucks on eBay. I'm like, oh okay. Like I don't think I want to do that. So but we're gonna get the radio working. I'm definitely gonna get the hi-fi going. Enjoying the tapes lately. Well. That's about it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call this a day. I'm going to call this a good one. Uh, so remember to keep being curious, keep digging at things, keep the lights on, and make some comments if you want to see more or know more, or if you know anything about stuff like this. If you're into this chip, like, let me know. I want to know. Um, we'll see if we can't find something else. I'm going to do some maths for you. Maths, not math, maths. No, I think it's math. 
uh, some of these British pronunciations are right and some of them are wrong. I'm not sure about aluminium, but I think solder's right. And, and maths is not the proper interpretation of that. It's, it's definitely math. But until then, as my long, long distant cousin Steve used to say, if the window find you handsome, just make sure they find you handy. And uh, keep your stick on the ice.